Hi, my name is Aran, and welcome to part 4 of my Roll20 Master series. Because the order of these videos are from the outside in, this video is about creating a game. If you're not a guide, a game master, this video is not for you. Go ahead, skip to the next one. If you are a guide and you want to know how to create a new game on Roll20 and use all the features that you can, listen up. When you first log into Roll20, this is what you'll see. This is the home page. You have your account info right here, notifications, the menu for everything on Roll20, and all of your recent games. What we are interested in is this button right here, create a new game. To create a new game, you need three things. The first is your game name. This is the name that will appear as your title and will appear in your player's games listing. Just call it whatever you want. You can also have tags, but that's optional. Secondly, choose your character sheet. There are a ton of character sheets on Roll20. I prefer the original ones because that's supported by my extensions. And as always, I play D&D 5e. That's it. The third thing is optional. You can choose a module. If you've bought things on Roll20, you can immediately uh, enter them into the game from here. And that's it. Create a game. This is your game start page. As always, you'll see who created it, hopefully that's you, and your players. To invite new players, you just click Invite Players. You can send them an invite by email address, or you can give them the link to click and join the game immediately. Recently, Roll20 added the ability to change the marker sets on tokens inside the game. You know, those images that you can put on tokens to mark conditions and various other things. Now you can create your own, buy them from the marketplace, and change them however you want. This is done right here. You can search for markers, you can remove markers, and I won't get into any more because that's a whole different topic for artists. From here you can also select which kind of game you're playing. You can choose to add the next date in which the game will be played. Just enter the schedule and your players will be able to see it. You can enter a short description. And you can also add modules and various other add-ons that you have from the marketplace from right here. If you haven't chosen your module at start time. There's also a kind of mini forum here you can use to communicate with your players. And you can choose any kind of image you want to put as the backdrop of your game. This will only appear here and in the game listing. Anything else will have to be configured inside the game. From here you can also access the chat archive of all the roles and chat messages inside the game. And that's all you need to know about the game page. You can just click the launch game button right here and it will send you into the app to play. But if you feel like getting into more advanced stuff, we can do it from here. The settings button opens a way to delete your game, copy it with everything in it to another game if you want to maintain what you've already set. But let's talk about game settings. Allow public access does what it says. It will put your game on the public listing and everyone will be able to find it. If you have players with characters that have already set up on their own and they're entering it into your game, for example if you're running Adventurers League and you have characters moving about, you will want to allow importing of characters so people can move their characters from game to game. I will explain about importing and exporting characters and the character vault in a later video. If you've bought any material on Roll20, like the player's handbook or any other material with player options and information, you can allow the players inside the game to access that material by sharing compendium content. From here you can also change the default character sheet that you've set at the start. It's just here for convenience. The default sheet settings allows you to set several options on the character sheet that will apply to every new character sheet you create inside the game. For example, you can set every new character sheet to be an NPC. I recommend you don't use it until every player has created or imported their own character. The Character Mancer is Roll20's rather new application for creating characters inside the game using Compendium content. However, it only works if you have the Compendium content. If you don't, like I usually don't, then you might want to turn it off. Roll queries, whisper rolls, and auto damage rolls control how rolls from the character sheet appear inside the Roll20 chat. As this will be your default settings, preferably for NPCs you will create after the characters are done, 
and you'll be controlling a lot of NPCs inside the game, I recommend you set it to always roll advantage, whisper toggle just in case you want to switch back and forth, and always roll damage and crit. This way you will only have to click a button once and not two or three times to get what you want. Tiebreaker adds the dexterity score of each character to its initiative roll and allows you to organize your initiative better when characters have the same initiative result. For some reason the default encumbrance is variant, the more difficult kind of encumbrance I recommend you switch it to simple or your, your players might be annoyed. When I GM I prefer to roll my results in the open but I still like to hide the NPC names so players wouldn't know exactly what they're fighting because I might change it and I don't want them to give them clues especially if the characters aren't supposed to know. When you're done with changing things right here Remember to save your changes, especially before exiting or switching over to default page and token settings, because otherwise you'll lose your precious work. Right here you have your game default settings, and that is the default settings for every new page that you create, and every new token that you create, and you can set it all right here. Here you have the page size, background color, grid size, whether to see it or not, which measurement, which I usually prefer to use Pathfinder 3.5 instead of the regular D&D 5, what color the grid will be, the opacity, etc, etc. And here we have the more interesting settings for every page. Fog of War is the basic Fog of War which allows you to polygon or square hide show areas inside the map to control what your players can see. But if you have any kind of paid subscription, you can use Advanced Fog of War and Dynamic Lighting. Advanced Fog of War sh still shows the map after the characters left an area, but in monochrome and without tokens, so the characters can map an area and not lose sight of where they've been. You can choose whether to show the grid on that section, whether dim light reveals it or not, and as always, every option here has a tooltip if you want to read it yourself. This adds the dynamic layer lighting to your game, allows you to draw polygons and squares to block player line of sight. If you enable enforced line of sight, then the players will only be able to see what their own character can see, and not what every character can see. I suggest you also set only update on drop, otherwise player might just pick up their characters, move them around the map, see everything you've hidden, and drop them where they've started, and you will be none the wiser. Restrict movement prevents tokens from moving through walls and prevents your players from surprising your monsters when they aren't ready. I suggest you don't set default global illumination because global illumination is the difference between having a day scene where players can see everything regardless of the vision cone as long as they don't have a blocking wall and without global illumination it will be like a night scene and players will vision will be limited. Here are the token defaults for every token you will create inside the game. I recommend you don't touch the bar or the auras for now unless you want to change where the bars are shown or if you want it compact or standard because you'll probably modify this data inside the game. However, I still recommend you set show nameplate so you will see the name of the token this might be more a personal preference, but I prefer my players to see the bars and the auras of NPCs, so they will see roughly how damaged an NPC is, but I don't let them see the text overlays, so they don't know exactly. And I also don't let them see the name of the character, so they don't overprepare with what it is. Recently, Roll20 released a new dynamic lighting feature into the general public, and it's supposed to be an update of the old Advanced Fog of War and Dynamic Lighting features, which will take over in several months as of filming this video. It works roughly the same way. You enable Dynamic Lighting on the page, Explorer mode is like Advanced Fog of War, it will still show areas the players have left, Daylight mode is like Global Illumination, showing everything as long as the players can see it, and again, Darkness Opacity, and per token you can set whether it can see or not, for default values, that is, new NPCs that you'll create, I recommend you turn it off so you won't overload the system because the dynamic lighting calculations are hard. But, just as an explanation, you'll probably set it for your PCs, whether they can see, if they have night vision, you can set how far it is, if it emits light, you can set how much bright light and how much dim light it is, and it will calculate total light like this. And as always, don't forget to save defaults when you're done. That's it, your game is set, all the defaults are as they should be, just click launch game, and there you have it. Thank you for watching, if you like what you see, please like the video, share and subscribe to my channel, or follow me on Twitch, that will be a great help. Thank you, stay good, and have fun.